Bismillahir A topic today is the fourth caliph of Islam, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. After the Muslims migrated to Medina, they finally had a place that they could truly call home. They were now free of the Meccans' persecution and additionally they were the rulers of Medina. Naturally, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the one who would assume the responsibility of the leadership of the Muslims. Not only was he one of Allah's most beloved prophets, but he was also a natural leader. Hence, he served as the leader of the Muslims, the Imam during the prayer, and the commander of the Muslim armed forces. One of his closest companions and allies was Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu. Unlike the previous caliphs, Ali's election took place in very uncertain circumstances. Towards the end of Uthman's tenure, conspiring forces dealt a severe blow to the unity of the Muslim ranks. Conspirators and rebels took advantage of his kind nature and desire for peace in all circumstances by sowing the seeds of doubt amongst people. That eventually escalated more and more until it culminated in the martyrdom of the third caliph, Uthman. Then the Muslims were under pressure to quickly announce his successor and they had to take a quick decision. Soon the people decided that Ali would be the fourth rightly guided caliph of Islam. While beginning his tenure as the new caliph, Ali faced a number of challenges, the likes of which none of the three previous caliphs had experienced. The wounds from Uthman's brutal assassination were still open and people wanted justice. At the same time, the culprits continued to spread their evil messages and ideas among the people. These insurgents and rebels were massive in number and they had no intention of letting the caliph rule with ease. Hence, they did all they could to disrupt him. Ali continued to focus on the administration of the state. However, the people wanted Uthman's killers to be punished and were impatient. He intended on doing that but would do so once he had all the facts and things had settled. Yet, the Muslims didn't want to wait. So Aisha anha read, led an army with the intention of punishing the rebels. Ali and his army encountered Aisha's army and after negotiations, they agreed to settle matters amicably. However, a twist was to come. During the dark of the night, after negotiations, the conspirators began a fight. They targeted the army of Aisha, Zubair and Talha. The main aim was to cause chaos and confusion on the battlefield. This strategy largely worked as the army naturally retaliated against Ali's army, thinking that they were under attack. Zubair embraced martyrdom during this battle, while Talha was also badly wounded. Aisha was on a camel before some of the fighters cut its legs, thus the name of the battle. In the aftermath of this event, Aisha withdrew to Medina and stayed away from political activity. Meanwhile, Ali who was sad about the devastating loss of life. Later, a vigilante group by the name of the Kharjites would wreak havoc among the Muslims. Caliph Ali and his army, however, dealt crucial blows to this group. As was the case with Omar and Uthman, the two previous rightly guided caliphs, Ali also died due to an assassination. The venomous effect of the Kharjites was still present on the ground and it was one of them who inflicted the blow. The killer aimed to take revenge for what happened in the Battle of Nahrawan. Hence, he made a lengthy plan with a few conspirators to ensure that they would kill the fourth caliph alongside Muawiyah and Amr ibn al -As. The man who would eventually carry out the terrible deed was Abdurrahman ibn al-Muljam. This man reportedly met a woman who infatuated him. She had lost her relatives at Nahrawan and she agreed to marry him if he killed Ali. Therefore, the man set out to do just that. Ali was offering prayer one day when this wretched man came and attacked him on the head with a poisoned sword. One of the men caught him and held him while the people tried to save Ali's life. While Ali was struggling for survival, he stipulated that the man should be dealt with by the Islamic ruling of retaliation. The fourth caliph breathed his last a couple of days later. Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu who would be the one to carry out the ruling of Qisas as his father had instructed. In this way, Abdurrahman ibn al-Muljam met the fate he deserved after killing the fourth rightly guided caliph of Islam. If you wish to learn or study the Quran, you may go to our website quranforkids.com or you can contact us on the given phone numbers. If you enjoyed the video, like and share it. Feel free to leave a comment as well and subscribe and press the bell icon.